hey guys good evening to you all i hope i'm audible hello chirag thanks for joining kamarjeet mahesh piyu sandeep sunil yashov welcome you all in today live se- live session hope i'm audible can someone confirm yes yes that's good thank you chirag thank you so much all right guys so my screen is visible to everyone yes uh, yeah okay good thanks again for confirmation so we'll start today very wonderful session that is a palo alto next generation firewall so i'll be your instructor and i'll be cover this entire session for the palo alto right so if any point of time during the our learning and study if you guys feel like i'm not understanding just try to stop me by texting message me or uh, even in the group chat whatever you having in the zoom call or you can always raise your voice right so it's two way communication always going to happen during the entire training i'll try my best to give the best learning experience for this palo alto session but in any point of view you feel like something is not understandable not clear to me you always welcome right it's not like uh, i'm speaking and you guys just listening okay so i want more this session to be interactive and two way we all will work together and together we will try to learn entire thing right because this sir, is something sir your skin is not visible okay who all are able to see my screen can some can one everyone not able to see uh, we i am able to see it okay Kamarjit, uh, you can try to go in some best network. I believe might be some issue from your end. You can check that. Okay, <clears throat> so this is something what I was trying to give you that like I would like to talk this before the class because I don't want to give any kind of the like uh, wrong impression while doing the course. everything should be fair so i want like everyone should let me mute again uh, i am muting the person 8394865804 so if you guys feel i am not understanding so you can ask me question any time and we can have a debate we can have a very good debate okay and during the debate might be we come to the conclusion might be sometime i'll be wrong so just challenge me sir you are wrong don't hesitate okay because i love to be someone is going to challenge me okay and if you guys are challenge me i'll work hard to figure out the all those you know answers what i don't know okay because we are all humans and there is always a scope we can improve ourselves right we are not something we are programmed and we can just you know Uh, know everything based on, based on the program yeah? right we are learning the next generation technology so if i talk about the next generation technologies so we have to invest our times we have to invest our you know precious time while understanding this next generation technology okay so whatever the technology right now available in the market for the digital transformation and growing for the it infrastructure so because you know already uh, you guys are aware about that post covid the things has been changed more of the organization is adopting about the hybrid culture of the working uh, way of the w- working and some people are working from home some people are working from home office some people are working from anywhere so to m- meet that all requirement we just have to use a technology who is just capable to you know cater those kind of requirement so to cater those kind of requirement we just have to focus about more in the next generation technologies likewise we are talking about the sd wan solution we are talking about the next generation firewall solution we are talking about the cloud security we are talking about the cloud we are talking about the cyber security lot of things we are talking right we are talking about the machine learning artificial intelligence so these all technology i can say one of the hot cake technology in a high paid jobs in available in the market so if you are the expert of the any of the product right even the cisco versa g scalar palo alto viptela there's visvo and viptela right now in the same and the cloud and checkpoint and f5 you will become the next generation engineer so the next generation engineer having the high chance to get the very high paid and very good salary in compared to the legacy engineers legacy engineers means who not upgraded themselves and they keep working on the like legacy firewalls configuration i'll just going to talk about what is a legacy firewall they keep 
working on the routing switching in infrastructure they are not upgrading themselves to the sd wan solution and some automation solution some kind of the uh, uh like i can say more about the programmable networks so those are going to be lack and might be they will not grow as much as what next in, next generation engineer can grow okay so that's why my focus would be just go in depth try to learn more and more try to ask more and more question try to do la, uh, lab more and more so whatever i'm going to cover uh, it is just everything is going to be theoretical and practical so whatever i'm going to teach you all it would be the same time i'll try to do the practical okay <clears throat> so i hope everyone is clear about the agenda and the, like what we are talking about anyone having any question before i can start about this session anything you guys wanted to know about the course content anything any other question in your having a mind about the career counseling you confuse about the career so we can discuss about that also there is no problem for me i keep you know motivating the people i keep giving the right direction to people so <laughs> this is also my job so i will try to help you all okay no worry if you uh, have any kind of question in future uh, during the uh, session you can ask me there is no problem let's start the session right without any delay so okay so welcome you all in the gwinnett technology right and this is a platform where you can get the multiple technologies like the firewall checkpoint sd wan ccn and ccnp and more courses going to be available very soon uh, on this platform likewise uh, let me show you all so we are planning to launch the devops course also we are planning to launch like uh, what uh, there is no but devops course and some cyber security also very soon on our platform so we are working with the different different people so we can launch this course so probably in the future days you guys will get the more uh, course about the more next generation technologies whatever available in the market right so now talk about the palo alto right so in previous session uh, when i was uh, live on the last friday and we just discuss about the course content and about the like what we are going to cover in the palo alto firewall <clears throat> but now today we are going to learn actually the firewall right why we need a firewall and uh, last if you guys are joined today only so let me just share the last class video we talk about the just some basic about the firewall like similar to the you know i can say some kind of introduction of the palo alto firewall so let me share my voice is not low goro uh can you adjust your mic or is it low for everyone because i think i am speaking on the right pace uh, and my mic is also correctly adjust okay so if you guys not attend the last session you can go and watch the last session where we discuss about more about the uh, different different vendor we try to do the uh, uh, we try to do the comparison between the cisco checkpoint uh, palo alto fortinet firewall why we use the palo alto firewall why not we use the cisco firewall why not we use the checkpoint firewall we talk about little bit of history about the palo alto firewall where it was originated and who was the founder and what was the background of the founder so these all information i captured in the previous classes and we also talk about the different different product about the palo alto firewall right what is the strata series prisma access and cortex xdr so and the gartner report also where the palo alto like the stand in the gartner report and the certification so these and all in after that we talk about the course module what we are going to cover so this was just the intro class nothing we started right now but today again we are going to talk in continuation of the intro about the firewalls because when we are going to understand any of the technologies we should understand we should understand why basically i need to understand and why should learn this technology what is the benefits of learning this technology right so i'll try to go with a very grassroots very zero and i'll try to give more examples like in the layman language so you guys can correlate what i am trying to talk okay but still you guys are not able to digest not able to understand just to stop me okay so let's start the session so <clears throat> first thing whenever we we start any anything about the firewall first we have to understand about the product okay why we need a firewall this is the first question come in a mind and where this firewall come in a picture okay so if i give a very 
real time example so might be you guys are using the laptop right my might be you guys are using the cctv camera might be you guys are using the physical security so if i am talking about the physical security that means uh, security guard in any society might be you are installing the door lock right and a lot of other features so i'm just giving these kind of simple examples and i'm telling these all are using a firewall using a firewall then question is how how they are using the firewall right so laptop is very easy laptop if you are opening the laptop they having the software based firewall already installed in the laptop so software based firewall already installed in the laptop if you go in the laptop and try to search why i give this example so you can just understand so you can see this is a window defender so this window defender is already installed in the your computer and this window defender having the lot of you know inbound rule and outbound rule similar to the policy in acl and you can see a lot of things are allowed and a lot of things might be i can deny i can create a new rule and based on my rule new rule i can make the xn as a deny might be let me show you if i am just creating the next see so it is asking the program path so uh, let me just give some kind of path i don't know what program path that i give or let me just give the all program for time being and this is the next and the next and then it is asking the name and the finish and then after it is going to ask the action in the what you want to do block the connection allow the connection see so allow deny connection are available here so similar is it the firewall and you can see some of the connection are allow and they having a profile they are enable connections and the different different authorization remote port local port protocol so this is the very you know complex acl is available in the computer pc also so this is the firewall right and it is already inbuilt in your computer but are this firewall is going to help your problem what we are going to learn the answer is no this is the firewall but this firewall having a different role and responsibility it is just limited to your laptop and in laptop they are capable to you know make your laptop secure and safe zone so if anything is going to be in or out might be firewall will be like going to be checked what is going to in and what is going to out and based on the checking they might be allow they might be not allow so laptop is very useful things and you are keep using this thing in your uh, home pc and they all are using the firewall this is the one example where the firewall is going to protect your laptop being exposed from the internet or you are just sending somewhere some something and you don't want to send that is also going to be exposed now we discuss more about this firewall but let me just talk about some real time scenario right so how this is going to work so if you are talking about the physical security physical security means you having the very good society or building right and in this building we might have to install one of the door you can see this is my door which is going to be install of the as a entry or might be the exit gate so this is my entry and exit door or you can say gate so this building having a lot of people are staying and you don't know everyone who is doing what right or might be some people trying to in this building for any kind of the courier delivery for any kind of the other services they are just trying to enter in your society or your building or your office so there is a one person who is going to stand for which we call the security guard or you can say security personnel let me mute for some people okay so this could be the anything where people might be you know <clears throat> come to you know in your building in your premises and they try to enter inside of building right so if they are trying to enter inside of building so there is a security personnel he is going to ask where are you going right they ask the question where you are going if he is going to tell i am going that flat number or that house number so might be they will use the intercom and they will try to call via the mobile or might be the intercom phone whatever the 
home having or might be they having a third party application where they send the message and they get the confirmation hey can you just confirm this person is trying to go to your home are you allowing him or you just really call him and if your answer is yes then he is going to allow to enter inside of the society if your answer is no your answer is no then he is going to deny so that means your packet the human being who is trying to enter the society is it acting as a packet so this packet only could be allow or could be deny based your intent based on your choice so this security guard acting as a far so firewall is available everywhere firewall is available everywhere it's not like it is not available so firewall is available everywhere you just have to understand you just have to understand the situation how it is available so you can see guard is acting as a firewall because the firewall is basically a device where it is giving the permission someone to enter your network or someone might be leave from your network right similar guard is doing the same thing right security guard is doing the same thing now let's assume that let's assume that you say yes you come to my house and this person again come to your building uh, come inside your building and finally they reach to your home and this is again new door for you right so this person allow and reach to your door and now again you have to look they are just going to ring your bell so after ringing their bell you just have to check might be you having some kind of the camera installed here inside of the door or might be the glasses they are installed right now in the doors and you can see who is a st- who is standing behind of my door and if you find this is a legitimate person this is the right person then you are going to open a door you are going to allow that means open a door if not you are going to deny the door means you are going to not open the door so this is going to be denied so this person never going to enter your house so see this is the, your door is also acting as a firewall so this is the, another example your door is also acting as a firewall now these are just allow and deny right but just think this person come to your home and you are not available to your home right so might be he is going to break your door and enter your house and they want to like do some kind of the activity where they steal some valuable item from your home so how you are going to capture right how you are going to see who was enter my home because might be security guard say i don't know who enter some kind of the loopholes might be he was not available might be he make the some wrong entry might be he uh, like uh, you know he was wear the mask or helmet where his face was not recognizable anything could be there right so once you install another layer of security that might be the cctv so this cctv again acting as a one of the level of the security advanced security so you are adding more money right your money will be just going to make a surveillance who was enter what time at my gate and what he did what he not did because his activity is going to be captured so this is the advanced feature might be you talk about you are integrating these all security guard doors cctv these all are going to be integrated together and they will give the more and more advancement uh, like uh, advancement of your security features so more money you are going to put more feature you are going to get right if you are not happy with cctv and still you want to deploy one more security guard here for just take care of your house then again additional cost is going to be increased but your one more layer of security is going to be added so i mean to say the first layer of security was the main gate this was acting as one firewall you cross it then second layer security was you deploy the physical security of your house door right and then you also deploy the cctv and this was your door lock so you can see this is the one layer security two layer security three layer security and the four layer security but if you all are using you just have to pay more so you have to invest lot of money to get this all done so similarly if anything 
if anything firewall if you take a definition firewall so we called firewall is like uh, uh, it's burning wall right this is a high flame burning wall so if you are trying to go directly without any protection without any permission you are just going to be burned and you are going to be dead right because firewall will kill you so it's a burning wall it is going to kill you because you don't have right protection right like uh, way to go inside of the firewall but if we having the valid protection valid justification valid proof then you can probably allow and you can just cross the firewall right so this is the firewall firewall is again it is a similar way firewall is again likewise the cctv camera likewise the physical security likewise the like your home security or your lock door it is going to act but what it is going to protect what kind of the devices it is going to protect so just it is a similar example again you are in the office right now non in society in this office again we having a gate this is might be your main gate so this gate you can protect by the physical security physical security again the concept will be going to be same the security is verify the all human identity then it is going to allow inside the office but inside your office some different different devices might be there some could be the switch some could be the printer some could be server so let me just write here this could be the switch this could be the server this could be the printer or might be you just having the routers it is connected or might be you just having the firewalls so could be anything which might be connected like this different different device some pc might be also connected some laptop might be also connected so you can see a lot of devices are there right and these devices are basically giving the communication media inside of network by using those communication media you are interacting outside of the world might be the internet so you are just talking with the internet so these router are going to the internet through the firewall or might be within the office might be this user want to talk with this switch or this server or this printer they can do that also it is completely fine there is no problem right so the problem is one gate the physical gate you protected right this physical gate you protected well with the physical security but what about the logical gate logical gate what that means a logical gate the gate by using you are entering the office to access these networks so that means you having the enterprise network you having the router you switch it and by sitting on the internet if this is my laptop i also connected to the internet this is my internet world by connected to this internet <clears throat> what is going to happen i might be able to access this router i might be able to access this firewall i might be able to this server this switch anything i could be access so if i am accessing these things from the internet so might be i'll get the remote access of these devices might be i'll get the server access and i can made your critical data changes i can delete your critical data might be i'll get the access of this server right i can shut down your server i can shut down your printer so people will not able to take printer server will shut down so people will not do the work might be they are trying to do some kind of the data entry might be the sql server might be the database server might be the sap server it could be anything or might be some your application might be your website is hosted there might be your locally hosted facebook just i'm giving an example that is not possible but might be just you hosted any social media application you would be not able to access those things right so this is something the person sitting on the internet who is trying to enter your network and after entering your network they wanted to destroy your network right likewise you recently heard about the ransomware you heard about the log 4g right these are the latest attack vulnerability attack was happened recently in india ems one of the uh, india uh, prestigious or i can say one of the best hospital available in the india the ems that server was also hacked by the hackers right how because they having a security breach there 
they having some kind of the loopholes and by sitting on the internet hackers take the access of server and take the access of all patient data and might be you are suffering from any of the illness your all record is there in the hospital and based on your record the doctors are doing the treatments but what if those records had been lost what if so might be whatever the treatment doctors was doing for me that was all null and void <clears throat> useless and you don't know what i can do for my again treatments might be it will start from zero you have to invest a lot of money for test you just have to pay a lot of for the fee as a like uh, consultation or medication so this is like a huge loss for the everyone so that's why the very critical you just have to be very careful while designing your network so you have to block you have to block your logical gate whenever the packet is coming from the internet to your lan network the firewall will play a very critical role the firewall will play a very critical role so once you are coming from the internet firewall will first inspect the packet inspect uh, the packet inspect means they are going to check the packet right inspect the packet you are the right person or not or right packet or not if you are the right only they are allow if you are not they are going to deny so i hope you understand so anything coming from the internet firewall will just verify the packet verify the connection verify the status and if it is going to fail this is the right person this is a legitimate person then it is going to allow you inside of the network but at any point of time if any point of time if if this packet is going to be suspicious activity or it is not like allow then it is going to be drop so this is the one thing similar if you are trying to go internet right you are sitting in the lan network and you are trying to go over the wan that is a internet so before your packet leave from the firewall toward the wan again you have to proof you are the right person or right you are sending the right packet if you are going to proof that i am the right person i am sending the right packet then this firewall is going to allow if you are not then it is just going to be drop again so is it not like something out to in out to in packet it is also in to out packet so in to out means lan to wan out to in means wan to lan right so either way firewall is going to check you and based on checking it is going to allow so this firewall having a capability the legacy firewall having some kind of the limit limitations but legacy next generation firewall having a capability to inspect the packet based on the various parameters let me just write those parameters so any ip packet whatever you have seen the ip packet having a uh, lot of information let me just write it here for you guys just for the understanding so if you draw if you draw any of the ip packet or might be any of the packets what information they are going to carry they are going to carry source mac destination mac source ip address destination ip address right they are going to uh, carry about the source port they are going to carry about the destination port they are going to carry about the application information they are going to carry some more information and after that they are going to carry content that we know the data so you can say this is the source and destination is the layer 2 information source and destination ip is a layer 3 information source port and destination port is a layer 4 information application is the layer 7 information we having some more field in the palo alto we discuss about that that you having the user id we having the like machine id right or device id we call not machine id device id so this kind of information also will fill here we'll discuss more about that and finally we having a content and actual data so the firewall is going to inspect different different parameter whenever it it is just going to uh initiate the connection 
the firewall is going to in inspect different different parameter like the IP, like where's the MAC, like where's the port, like where's the protocols, application, and even the content. So it is not like content is not. So what is the content? So con content is, let's say suppose this is one PC. This PC want to talk with this PC, B. In between we having the firewall, right? So this PC want to talk with this PC and he want to send one of the attachment as an Excel file, right? So Excel file he want to share. So if he want to save the Excel file, in this Excel file, he want to put some data, likewise the company, you know, uh, what I can say, company revenue data, right? Revenue data he want to share. But PC A, A is not allowed to share the company revenue data or the, the financial data to anyone. So if he is going to share as an attachment of the Excel file and inside of the attachment, if the company having the financial data, which is very confidential to the company, your firewall can be looked about the Excel file also. And after looking the Excel file, if you found you are leaking the data, it is going to block. It's having a such much, uh, such like of intelligence. Even you are sending one of the notepad, notes, Bad file and in this file you writing one word like confidential and this word might be not allowed to say any file who having the confidential word that should not be allowed to pass from the firewall that is also going to capture by the firewall so these are the content whatever the attachment what is the email whatever the parameter you are sending those all acting as a content so the content is going to be, you know, verified by the firewall. And after doing the verification of the content, firewall is going to take a certain actions, right? So based on the content, based on the application, if your network or your firewall is not allowed to allow a traffic for the WhatsApp application, for the Facebook application, for the YouTube application. So these YouTube, Facebook, might be you are sitting in the office network and you are trying to access this, the FB, WhatsApp, might be the YouTube. Mm -hmm. So this might be not allowing the firewall. So whenever you are going to access this website, it is going to be blocked and you never going to open. I'll show you in the very live, okay? It is not the, the theoretical stuff. I'll just prove everything, how this is firewall is going to block. So this is also possible with the firewall. So any application I want to allow, any application I want to block based on my intent, it is a completely possible. It is a completely possible. There is no problem, right? Similarly, if I want to allow any traffic based on the destination port, what could port could be? Might be the 443 for the HTTPS, port 80 for the HTTP. So this is the HTTPS port, and this is the HTTP port. Might be 23 for telnet, 22 for the SSH. So these port might be DNS. It could be the 53 port. So any port which I want to allow from the network, I can allow if I want to deny, I can deny, right? So this is the port level of the segregation also I can do with the help of the firewall. It can block the port, it can block the application, it can block the content, it can allow the content, it can allow the application, it can allow the ports. Similar, we having the IP. So based on the IP, source destination IP also might be the IP is 10.10.10.10. I don't want to allow this IP from this firewall. I can block it. If any packet is coming for this IP address and I don't want to process this IP address from the your LAN to WAN, it is absolutely possible. You can simply block it. There is no worry, right? So you can always block it, okay? So a lot of parameters we have in the firewalls, they based on the different, different parameters, they are going to take a different, different actions and based on the different different action, your traffic could be allowed and could be blocked. Any question guys still here? Anyone having anything in your mind about the firewalls? Why we need the firewall? How it is going to work? Anything coming in your mind and you want to highlight that should be more clear or, or might be not understand you this? Okay. So I'm just taking as a everyone you guys understand and uh, 
no problem so let me just move a little bit more so i will just go and try to cover one of the topic which is very important for you all right so whenever you talk about the firewalls we having a two type of the firewalls one is a legacy firewall one is a next generation firewall right so we understand the functionality of the firewall now we just have to understand what is a next generation firewall and what is the legacy firewall because we whenever you go for the interview there will be a question what is the stateful firewall and what is the stateless firewall this is question is going to be 99% chance you will get this question well whenever you go for the any firewall related interview because we are not talking about the palo alto right now still i didn't talk anything about the palo alto except some introduction of the palo alto in the previous class today i didn't talk about the palo alto i'm just talking about the firewall 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 it could be any vendor firewall i'm not talking about it, it could be the cisco firewall it could be the palo alto firewall it could be the forty gate firewall or checkpoint firewall right it could be the forty gate firewall it could be the suppose firewall x y z whatever the firewall is thing it could be any firewall and every firewall having the similar kind of the concept so you just have to understand why the legacy firewall having a problem and how those problem is going to mitigated by the next generation firewall right so i have one question from the kamarjit he is asking how to identify the links is malaysia or infected in the firewall that's a good question kamarjit so basically to identify the malaysia's traffic in a firewall firewall if i talk about the next generation firewall they having capability to only do that they can identify any malaysia's traffic which is going to enter to your network or they are going to out from your network and they are basically identify based on the signatures so we'll talk about more signatures so every signature like the virus we having a signature we having the antivirus signature we having the vulnerability protection signature we having the spying signature we having a zero day attack signature right that's we call the wildfires right we having any kind of the url filtering signatures we having any kind of data leak signatures so every malicious content malicious information malicious url the firewall itself having a signatures available or based on that signatures they are going to identify which is the malicious which is non non malicious and if it is going to find my particular packet type my particular content type is malicious so probably based on your choice if you find the malicious what do you want to do with this particular traffic you want to kill them or you want to allow them if you want to kill it is going to be kill if we want to allow even it is going to be allow being a malicious but it is a harmful for your network so the probability you should kill them right so <clears throat> this is how malicious can be identify we'll discuss more about this in the upcoming section how this signature is going to work because this is going to cover in this section let me tell you a little bit so anything that is about the malicious that is a content id you can see antivirus anti spyware vulnerability url filtering ddos protections right data filtering and a security profile for the file blocking wildfire these all are just for the malicious anything that is like you have heard about the ips engine intrusion prevention prevention system you have heard about the ids so ips and ids these are the two engines might be you heard more about the cisco firewalls these functions is done by this content id the both whatever they are doing the ips and ids they are just combined with the content id in the palo alto firewall and in this by using this particular content id you can perform the ids and ips feature and based on that you can allow or you can block or you can generate the alert whatever you want you can do that okay so this is what malicious now let's move to again about the stateful and the stateless firewall so i keep talking we having the legacy firewall and we having the next generation firewall so let's understand carefully if i have the legacy firewall what they are going to inspect and if i have the next generation firewall what they are going to inspect so if i am talking about the legacy firewall again the packet would be the same but this based on the packet 
they having some kind of the informations let me just write here they having a source ip they having a destination ip they having a source port they having a destination port and then finally they having the payload so your legacy firewall only inspect the layer 3 packets and the layer 4 packets these only two they are going to inspect but if you are going to discuss about the next generation firewall so next generation firewall basically they having a more fields like the not level 3 information they are going to put the level 4 information l7 information and few more and then they also understand the content so next generation firewall having the more field to inspect the traffic and based on the more field inspection they are going to take the different different actions right so this is about the next generation firewall right so this one difference you have to take care in mind so next generation firewall can do the inspection based on the layer 3 layer 4 layer 7 and some additional field i'll going to cover in the upcoming section i'll going to show you those fields plus content so you just have to at least know level 3 level 4 level 7 and the content right and we'll discuss more about this but your legacy firewalls old firewalls only about the layer 3 and the layer 4s i hope it is clear to everyone now talking about the stateful firewalls so what is a stateful sorry a stateless and a stateful so one is the stateless so a stateless means what is a state so a state means you having some kind of the connections state means you having the connection table connection table or stateless means no connection table you just have to understand these two things so state this is the, your first one is a stateful and this one is the stateless so this one having a connection this one having no connections right so what is the connections so connection that means let's say suppose uh you you are using one of the computer right you are using one of the pc and uh, you are accessing the facebook.com right you guys realize your browser sometime do the cache right once you access the website they keep that information in their cache and once we next time going to access those page automatically the page will be the opens you notice might be your page will be the automatic credential will be the save your page will be auto automatically open without any credential and all so how those things happens so basically your browser keep the informations state information of the users what user was done in the last time and based on that information they keep logging to the your credential or your page information through the any social media site or any company website so basically your browser is keeping your state your credential and information your connections and based on that they are taking the action i'll give you the more relevant example after that you'll understand so this is something known as the stateful that means you are maintaining something your local database you are doing some cache activity you're just one information i just access from the internet that information is keep in my memory so that is a state table so next time when you come to me i no need to search my control plane information so this is the stateful so more relevant let's say suppose this is the user and they want to talk with the internet so the stateless firewall is basically work on the acls and stateful they work on the policy this is the one thing so what is the acl what is the policy policy so technically they are the same policy is the same likewise the acl only difference is the acl having some less parameter to match so this is the like they having to match only the layer 3 and layer 4 informations acl can match these two things but if we talk about the policy it can match the layer 3 it can match the layer 4 it can match the layer 7 it can match the data content plus few more items few more things i am just writing here we'll discuss later right so pol policy is quite granular they having a more field more information and based on the more information we can take a lot of actions so this is the first thing you just have to stateless firewall always based on the acls they just inspect about the layer 3 and layer 4 stateful is more about the your layer 3 layer 4 layer 7 and your 
uh, what I can say, data and some few more things like user ID, content, uh, user ID, machine ID that we just have to, or device ID, we can match there. Okay, we'll see later stage. Now moving to again, the next thing, if you see the definition about the stateless and a stateful firewall, it is talking about in a stateful versus a stateful firewall, stateful and a stateless firewall, firewalls work by treating each packet an isolated unit. That is a talking about the stateless firewall. So they are talking, if you are talking about the stateless firewall, each packet which is going to hit to the firewall, they are acting as a isolated unit. However, when you talk about the stateful firewall, it is going to maintain context about the active session and use state information to speed up the packet processing. This is the one thing, wonderful things. So what does it mean? So does it mean one thing we understand, if you are trying to send the packet from here to internet, this packet processing will be the slow because it is a stateless. But if you are using the stateful firewall and you are just trying to send the packet from the internet to the uh, like user to internet, it is the fast. This is a definition we have seen, but how it is going to be fast? Let's understand. So what is going to happen? Let's say suppose this user wanted to talk with this internet. So this user having some IP address, might be the 10.10.10, .10 and they wanted to go on the Facebook destination, which IP address is 20.20.20.20. Let me just use this one. Instead of writing in this way, I can use better way. So this machine having the IP is this, and they want to access this one, right? So you just have to create one access list and access list you just created. And you, in this exercise, you are saying, I'm just writing here, allow from 10.10 10 to 20.20, 20. right? Like what you just written. This is not format of the access list, but I'm just writing here, but just for your understanding. So in this exercise, I'm saying, if any traffic coming from this particular PC, you just allow to go there, right? So the first time when the user want to access this Facebook, it is going to the firewall and firewall will check this access list. And it will say, okay, you allow and go, no problem. But when the firewall, when the user again say, I want to access this particular Facebook, the firewall again go and check the SEL and again go to the Facebook or whatever server. When it third time comes, again SEL will check and again it will go to the destination. So in short, whenever you want to access the any of the public destination, your ACL will be always checked. Without checking the ACLs, you cannot move on from one source to another destination. This is the key thing you just have to take care in mind. So every packet, whatever they want to go on the same destination again and again, ACL must be checked. So you can see, each package treating as a isolated unit. That's why every time, whenever the packet is going to be come, every time your ACL is going to be checked. So this is about the state less firewall. But if this is the same thing is going to happen in this scenario, stateful firewall, your packet will be the same. Your destination will be the same, but now you having a next generation firewall. So you are going to create the policy. In this policy, you are again saying allow 10.10.10.10 to 20.20.20. .20 again, you are writing the policy similar to the ACL. See, there is no much difference. We are just writing this. But what is going to happen? When the first time this PC want to talk with this server, it will check the policy. The first packet will check the policy. It is going to check the policy. And if I found, yes, I have the policy to just allow this packet to this destination, it is going to allow. But this is the first packet, okay? But when the next packet is going to come, then what is going to happen? The policy is going to be checked. The answer is no. It is not going to be checked. Not going to be checked. It is not going to be checked. Why? So in detail, I'm just giving the 
right now solution about this but if you want to learn in detail about the packet flow of the palo alto firewall how the packet treatment is going to happen when firewall is going to land to the firewall ingress interface what is the slow path what is the fast path and what the connection table is going to build we'll discuss more about in this packet flow in the upcoming session uh 839486 you want to ask something bro you having any question no 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 okay okay uh, what is your name may I, let me just write your name anand 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 okay anand thank you sorry i was just keep talking your number because there is no i just make you change in your name so i can recall your name okay anand thank you so this is about the packet flow so this packet flow we'll understand in the very deep dive because this is our first when we start the module this is the first module we are not officially starting today because we just have to understand the fundamentals then we'll start the official module by the next class so any stateful firewall which is going to be you know treated as a next generation firewall every packet which is going to hit they in a palo alto they are just going to land in the slow path slow path is something we are going to talk in very detail but i'm just giving the example slow path is something which is help to create the session and after session is created it is going to install in the fast path right so now the same situation if the packet is going to come again to me the packet is going to come to again to me then what is going to be happen so my packet is going to come next time to me i will not check the policy because my job has been done my firewall have made this one job where they create the cache of this session in their brain that cache is known as the state table that means they design one cache and saying if this packet want to talk with this pass packet just switch this packet from this interface to this interface by using the connection table or state tables so they bring in their like brain in such way where all the states all connection are going to be stored so your packet processing will be the fast after the one packet and your packet is going to be processed very fast because your states are going to be checked again and again again and again and it is keep processing the packet based on the policy they are being the states so this is going to be fast processing right so this is a stateful firewall and they having the lot of information they are going to be checked so you can say treat each packet in the isolated uh, isolated isolation and does not relate to the connection state stateful maintain the context and about the active session and use the state information to speed up the packet processing based on the information packet headers based on the flow so they having a flow and based on the packet information headers of uh, whatever layer 3 and layer 4 information they have and based on that they just basically process the packet right and based on the flow information they packet the process right now security is low and security is high here memory utilization is low because they not have to do much processing not lot of information they have to check they have to check lot of information so that is going to be high connection state unknown here is known because they maintain the connections performance of the firewall is going to over up be fast because they just have to switch the packet so data plane performance is always to be high but it is going to be slow little bit in compared to this but now a day firewall is coming with a very powerful hardware with the latest models it is doesn't matter for you but theoretically yes you can say connection is going to be little bit slow because they have to process more about the packets in compared to the stateless firewall so if i ask did you guys understand about the stateful and stateless firewall just tell me yes no maybe <laughs> or if you having any question just please tell me everyone understand or anyone having any question in your mind kamar ji is saying yes stand sir what about the chirag how do you feel it is it digestible to you uh, or, yes yes is, is it clear right yeah uh, anand what about you you understanding yeah just now i joined that's why maybe some little bit confusion i uh, maybe okay so uh, and uh, after uh, maybe in half an hour after more uh, i need to join the office also oh okay 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 what are you so pyawar and sandeep you so uh, what about you you understand something clear 
I believe he is on mute. Uh, I have one question about the context. So what are those parameters based on the context is created? Because let's say uh, there is a one packet is originated from the inside John and reaching out the particular site and the policy allowed it. So next, where did the next packet come? And it has the same port number, but something different about they want to access something different than mm -hmm. how okay. the context is created. Very nice question, Shirag. I appreciate it. So you having like two packets, right? One packet uh, from the same source, might be I'm taking example 10.10.10, .10 right? And this is again uh, another packet, which is 10.10.10. .10. They both wanted to process whether firewall, this is the same firewall, not two firewall, just take the same firewall. Let me just, so this is the same firewall, but two different packet. This pack, this wanted to access the Facebook, right? This might be access the YouTube. So two source trying to access two application. Is it the same thing you are trying to ask Chirag? Or two different port might be this is the 80 and this is the 443. Yeah, maybe the port or something different application. Let's say they are using Facebook Messenger. Or... Yeah, okay, okay, got it, got it. So we having a, that's why the next generation firewall, we having a different, different fields I talk about you can block the packet based on the source IP address. You can block the packet based on the destination IP address, but your source is common for this. Destination might be very because it's an internet IP address. So any destinations, you cannot always go and find the Facebook destination, YouTube destination, because they're having a tons of destinations. Might be Facebook and YouTube both are working on the 443 port. Support is a common, right? Data might be anything, but key thing is the application they having the application. These application is different. So one is the Facebook application and one is the YouTube application. So based on the application, we can either allow the application for the Facebook or we can allow the application for the YouTube. This might be going to be happen. But even if I have the application and inside the application, likewise, you mentioned that in this Facebook application, I have two subset application. The two child application might be the Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger and Facebook Live or Facebook video. So is it possible I can do that? The answer is yes, you can do that. Let me show you something interesting about the application ID of this particular uh, Paul Alto firewall. Still, I'll be a little bit brief about the lab and all, but let me show you probably. So you can see here, if I'm trying to figure out the Facebook here, we'll discuss in very detail. No worry. I'll just, whatever you ask, it is going to cover in very detail here in the actual practical scenario in the application identification. So we having one of the module here, when we discuss about the application ID, these are all things is going to be covered and we having the content ID that is also going to be covered. So here we can see here, if I want to do something based on the application, we are the dealing with the Facebook, but I want the same user can access the Facebook chat, but they cannot access the Facebook video. They cannot do the Facebook game. They cannot join the Facebook plugins or Facebook uh, other like rooms. I can do that. Even the single application within the major family, if I want to block, I can block it. Similar, there is a YouTube. If I want to block all Facebook, it is possible. I can just simply block it. I want to allow, I can allow. But even the inside of the Facebook, we having a different different application, chat, video, and voice or games. We can block that also. It is absolutely possible, and I'll show you in the live. In addition of that, likewise, the YouTube, YouTube having a lot of features like with the YouTube base, YouTube live chat, YouTube TV, YouTube posting. If you want, someone can not upload the video while sitting in the office network, cannot stream the YouTube in the office network. You can block them, and rest can be accessible. So it is completely customizable completely possible and we'll do test everything in the live classes. So this policy, if I start with any lab, so uh, let me just brief about the lab. So once you start the session, you will get, get the like uh, this kind of the URL. So you can see this is the URL, uh, racks.junit.com. It can be accessible from anywhere, right? So if you guys try it, it can be accessible from anywhere and you will get the credentials, right? Uh, might be the port number will be difference. So you'll get the credential for this. And after putting your credentials, you will be the able to access this GUINET labs for doing the labs activity. Okay. 
So here I'm just putting my credential as an admin because uh, I have the admin credentials. Probably it is not opening in this browser. So I need to change the browser. Uh, this is having some problem in this browser. So incognito, if you face such kind of issue in your network also, you can change the browser, okay? Incognito or the guest browsing, it is going to be open. So if I'm opening this lab, See, this is my Palo Alto Firewalls Labs. So in this Palo Alto Firewalls Lab, we just have to do a lot of information. Next class, we'll discuss about the architecture and the day zero firewall configuration. When we having the brand new firewall, how we can configure the brand new firewalls, right? So when we start doing this brand new firewall configuration, we'll get more information like about the CLI, about the console, about the management port about the like doing the day zero configuration, everything will do that, right? So probably firewall will be ready after uh, five to 10 minutes, then we can uh, try to explore a lot of things. But what I'm trying to say, once we define the lot of applications and based on the applications, if you want to play around with my network, I can play around with. If I want to play around with the ports, I can play around with. It is absolutely possible, Chirag, okay? So probably I'll show you later, once the firewall will be ready. Okay. Any any other question, guys? <clears throat> if you having anything in mind about the this uh, uh, stateful and a stateless firewall, or anything apart from that, also we can discuss. Because I just wanted to make session is the smaller because we are starting, so I want to go uh, slowly because we just have to do four day class in a week. So I don't want to go in the hurry, so you cannot digest the things. Else, uh, my motive is not to complete the session. My motive is just to make the bit and bite. You know. Uh, to enter your brains, okay? So then you can grow gradually. If I load everything one day, probably you will be not able to judge this and your next class will be the less interesting, okay? So we'll slowly go and we'll take the, you know, little bit uh, faster in the upcoming session when we're having the good foundation. So if you're having anything about the question, you can ask. Meanwhile, let me show you. So uh, probably uh, today or not possible if today, tomorrow we'll get the, everything about the lab access. So you start doing the labs from the next class when we will do the day zero lab access configuration about this Palo Alto firewall. And every recording will be available, every document, like what all documents we have. So <clears throat> we having like uh, official book, official like we having a uh, certification guide. And apart from that, we having a lot of uh, CLI hardware troubleshooting commands. So you can do the double debug troubleshoot for the CLI. Every doc documents, you can see a lot of CLI commands we have. By using the CLI commands, we can test a lot of thing in the firewall. So that also, yes, uh, Kamarji checkpoint is also, every firewall, next generation firewall right now you're using, they all are the checkpoint, they all are the stateful firewall. Uh, every firewall which is coming in the market, now all are the stateful firewall because they are all are the next generation firewall. Okay, if you want to take the like uh, debug and all, I'll teach you everything how we can uh, take this all so you get this information from this cheat sheet so everything will get here troubleshooting the hardware issue if you want to do that so we having a dedicated official set official guide how can troubleshoot i'll show some kind of the reference also right so you, you can check that testing so every documentation will be there in the portal and uh, you'll get the drive links and in that drive your class recorded is be there your documentation will be there your lab guide will be there so also we having some kind of the complex scenario for that like we just when we create like uh, uh ha when we create like the what else global protect right like, so we just have to work on the lab guide because they're having the complex scenario how the lab guide is going to be covered and everything so everything will cover in the lab guide also so you'll get the step-by-step -step knowledge for the some of the complex topic as a lab lab guide so you don't have to struggle much. And additionally, this is our official course content where we'll discuss about the module one, module two, module three, module four, module five, module six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And this having the active active, let me just one thing is missing here. Let me just add here. What happened? This is the two things actually somehow it's missed or uh, deleted one of the active active one of the active passive also right so do uh, two things we'll cover here and global protect and ipsec everything is it is going to be covered right in the actual lab i'll show you even you can see here in our lab we also having a very good uh, lab for the global protect and side to side vpn 
so no need to worry at all because earlier we having some issue but we fixed that and now we start doing the global product labs right they people are having very high demands that you are not covering so let me just see so this is our global product lab it's ready already we have uh, trained a lot of people on this particular global product sessions client to site vpn how it is going to form and addition these are the key thing for the farmer and this is the right real time and you have to use day to day and uh, we put a lot of effort to arrange everything to make this lab possible and additionally we having the site to site vpn where it is this is site to site vpn so this is also going to be covered in very detail everything about the ip sec everything about the tunneling protocol everything about the you know how this is going to be configured so this is also going to be covered and this lab is accessible to you anytime and as per topic you keep doing the configuration we understand about the ospf we understand about the bgp configuration we understand about the static routing configuration so most of the things we can do in this particular bigger lab where we having the lot of devices we can integrate with the U ad you can integrate with the ftp server and based on the integration of different different devices different different server we can integrate the kali linux machine who can generate the live attack for the ddos for the you know a vulnerability attack some other attacks and how the firewall is going to protect how the servers are going to be integrate the ad how the ftp is going to protect from the data leak so everything the way lab has been designed so you will guys you all will get the very good insight of the palo alto firewall and you can explore every feature of the palo alto firewall and once you complete this course i am very sure like you guys will be the champion whatever you are doing and you can easily deploy design or troubleshoot any incident any kind of the uh, documentation or the configuration of the firewall right so that's all for time being from my side okay if you guys is having any question you can ask me else we'll connect tomorrow uh, on the same time and we'll discuss further okay so we'll get the next class detail very soon okay any question anyone Uh, next class uh, will be on tomorrow or uh, be on wednesday <laughs> uh we will do this class monday to thursday what i am thinking uh, monday to thursday that is a four day friday will take off okay so because uh, in previous sessions we keep doing the alternate but people are like uh, less you know uh, active on the friday so i just want to make like friday would be the free time for the everyone and we'll try to do monday tuesday wednesday and thursday if you guys feel one uh, any uh, like uh, issue just let me know uh, and one more thing i need to know that uh, how many class has it, uh, it has been like uh, it uh, like uh, has been done like one or two classes are already been over or uh, no no this this is this, a, when we are not started the official class <laughs> we are not started the official class Yes, we official module is still not started. We are just because, discussing. Uh, I'm just trying to manage my office as well and as uh, uh, as well as like this uh, learning and uh, coaching also. Because after a one hour, my uh, office will be start. And uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. This uh, the uh, tutorial will be started from seven to nine, right? Seven and, uh, to we'll we'll try to finish not nine because we have to learn four days. So we we wrap up. before uh, 8:30 or around 8:30 not more than that okay not more if you having the yeah, yeah 8:30 yeah 8:30 will wrap up this session because i believe personally 90 minute learning is enough for the any good learning so because we can we can go officially yeah. my office is started from 9:30 and after before 9:30 i would need to log in so many tools that's why uh -huh. i uh, i log in early and for that one maybe if uh, the class will over at 9 then it will not be man i will no no no, no yeah. 8:30 i will make sure the class will be over okay more than okay, 10 okay. minutes we can go beyond but 8:30 will the class will be over okay, okay because okay. we value the times for everyone uh, so i don't want to give the false commitment okay no need to worry okay okay so yusuf is asking to me uh, can we get the recording yes yusuf definitely uh, let me just ask to concern team to get everyone email details so what we'll do this today class recording will be uploaded tomorrow because it's take 24 to 12 hour to upload it on the portal because uh, it's the cloud based recording uh, here you can see cloud based recording so and one more thing i need to like uh, is there anything need to know in depth in the bgp ospf for learning a palo alto 
No, no, no. You don't need to know Boji per SPF. If you're having the basic understanding of the static route, that's enough for in this uh, Palo Alto learning. There is no routing okay. prerequisite, but basic networking like VLAN routing as uh, how oh, yeah, it is that, going to work. That, no, that much. That's only required. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Kamarjit, PDF notes, everything will be uploaded. No need to worry. Even and class uh, schedule time is uh, like seven to eight thirty, right? Yes, it is seven to eight thirty. Yeah, it's com confirmed okay. seven to eight thirty. Okay, and Monday to Thursday and, is official time. Yeah, Monday to uh, and uh, it will around and uh, it will take around for two months to complete this. I uh, it will take because it is the weekdays class. Okay, so it is going to finish probably by uh five or six week. It is going to finish. Not more than that I because it's a, yeah yeah yeah. Month, it is month month. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Month yes. Month. Yes. If if you're going on a daily basis, there is no break. Uh, if some region unfortunate scenario if we take in, then it is going to complete within two months or one and, and a half. And after month. one and a half, I do have a doubts and I need to ask. Can I can say uh, say we having one of the very good opportunity. This follow all to batch every time it's start by seven or might be the eight. There is only two timing for the follow all to batch for this a week days. Okay. So even you complete the session and anyone, it's for the everyone, right? So just note this, and this is not fake, fake commitment. Even you can see in this batch, also many people are joined from the previous batches. I can take the name also right, right away. They're not asking mm -hmm. much question because they are from previous batches, don't know, they know me. So you can always join. You can always, without any charge, without any any single money, you can okay, always that, join the same that, course. Okay? That is very helpful for us. That is very helpful for us. Yeah. Because so this uh, is what happened. Like uh, one time, maybe in a one time we are not clear, not much clear. Maybe uh, so many works we have. Like uh, we have to manage office also. That's mm -hmm. we have forgotten. Uh, we have we used to forget all some of the little little things. Are we maybe not able to connect all those mm -hmm. things? Are nice. That's uh, uh -huh. if we if we ever have an opportunity to uh, like uh, to take a class on another batch or it will it will be very helpful. No need to worry, Anand. It is it is our commitment, and we never uh, like do the false comment in the live sessions in front of any person, right? So you yes, can please. anytime uh, you can if you feel like uh, any to repeat, you can repeat it. There's no problem. No, okay? no, no, no. Thank you, thank you. So. Uh, Kamarjit, yes, definitely. PDF notes and uh, every learning details will be, you know, material will be uploaded. Uh, I will try make it today. So if not today, tomorrow, definitely it is going to happen before the class. Okay. This is my commitment. Okay. So this is all from my side. Any other question, guys, you want to ask any confusion, anything, any suggestion, any feedback, if you want to give, you can give it on record. There's no problem. Okay, so I just considering everything is fine from my side, uh, but still you feel free to just text us or message us or talk to us after this class if you're having any concern. So for time being, I would uh, stop this meeting here and we'll connect again tomorrow by the same time. Okay, have a great day and have a good evening for everyone. Okay.